www.sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Hour. And indeed, here we are on a Monday night at www.vapertrails.tv forward slash things, the live page. And this is the Here's Hour, and, and I am joined tonight by Keith. No, I'm not. Either that or he's lost a hell of a lot of weight. Keith will be joining us on Mondays from, from here on in. Pick the right camera, David. Um, he will be joining us on Mondays from here on in, but not tonight. And he, he should not be with us on Thursday night either. But on Thursday night, I am told, Chris Choi will be following uh, the Tonight programme that goes out at 7.30 on Thursday night. The Rise of ASICs. All good stuff, you know. All good stuff. But I am joined by my old mucker. I use that term advisedly, for it is she who must be obeyed in all things VTTV. Over in the, the right hand, well, my right hand side, it's your left hand side as you were looking at it. We've got Chris, how are you doing tonight, cop? All right. I'm doing canny tonight, thanks very much, Dave. I, I tell you what, you, you've, got a, you've got an absolutely caught and picture coming through. That makes a change. It does. I think the internet pixies are looking after you tonight, Mrs. <laughs> It's very, very high resolution. And the lighting is casting very interesting shadows over your physiognomy. Oh, I like interesting shadows. At my age, you bloody need them. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an interesting show tonight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. That's what's been happening today. The has indeed. The has indeed. And, 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 chat, you have a choice. You're going to have a choice. There's going to be, it's not take it or leave it either. You'll get, I'll take them off then. I can, oh God, that's worse. Um, you'll have a choice between two live recoils. A dual coil and a single pseudo micro coil on a K phone. Just a thought. Hmm. It'll be Sounds all, oh, it'll be all good. It'll be all good if I can make it work. I've, just as a clue, no pressure, I've taken the K phone to bits. <laughs> As you can see, the care fund's there and ready. That's not not to, to put any pressure on anywhere, and we'll not ask you yet. Uh, but first, what we will do, I think it's probably a good idea to play the titles, isn't it, really? Ah, uh, well, let's have some titles. For fear I forget. We'll play the titles, uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about this Teveka debacle, or fluster cook, as I would call it. Um, we're also going to look at uh, wicks, different kind of wicks, and we've got a little bit to talk about on that. And, and uh, Chris has got a little bit of a, wa a warning or a caveat or, or something along those lines that we'll talk about when we talk about wicks. Um, there's some blasts from the past if we ever get up to them. Um, hey. And there might be the odd picture or whatever coming up on screen. You never just know your look, you know things for people to have a look at and make them go ooh but that of course will be after the titles because this is the here's our the here's our, the here's our. say it again the here's our, the here's our. <laughs> Yes, indeed, it is the Here's Hour, and let's get straight into this whole Teveco thing. Now, if you're not aware, Teveco is the T Tobacco Vapor Electronic Cigarette Association, headed up by one Ray Story, who also heads up the Tobacco Vapor, it's TVUG or TVGU, one of the two, but basically that's a, it's a wholesale um, outfit as I understand it that supplies a number of various different dealers. 
they also happen to Vecca to be members of Coresta. C O R E S T A. And let's uh, let's just look that up and and bung it up on screen and that would be on that camera there. This is Caresta, which is the Cooperation Centre for Scientific Research relative to tobacco. Interestingly, very, very interestingly, there's a list of the board members. British American Tobacco, China National Tobacco, Imperial Tobacco, Japan Tobacco, RJ Reynolds Tobacco, Universal Leaf Tobacco Company, and somehow the University of Kentucky. So that's who Tevek is in bed with. And if you haven't been on Twitter and you haven't seen it, you might want to be having a look at what Clive Bates posted earlier on today. Feel free to chime in anytime you like, Chris, but remember, even though we're over 18, you and I are being polite tonight. Oh, can I not swear? Well, under your breath. Okay. Like you do when you get a leak in something on screen. <laughs> so okay. you, have, you have to mumble it. <laughs> so, I'll be good. It's all right. I mean, please yourself. If you want to go for it, go for it. All the gloves are off tonight because I'm annoyed. Right, back to the camera and let's see what Clive had to say. There it is. Confused e-cigarette trade association supports e-cigarette regulation it opposes. This confused the hell out of me. Um, it starts off with, this is a letter sent to MEPs today in which an e-cigarette trade association displays naivety and a measure of contempt for its customers while not apparently understanding the process it, it is involved in. Second reading isn't inevitable. Let me put a question to Tevecca. All those things you list that you don't like and make no sense, how are they going to change if the directive passes unchanged? In the courts? Anyway, let's go and have a look at the letter they writ. Dear Rapporteur and Shadows, I ought to really do this in an American accent because apparently it's mostly American. First of all, we'd like to wish you a very happy new year and best wishes for 2014. Creeps. Arse licking. With 2038, did I say that out loud? Uh huh, see, bizarre did. With 2013, a very busy and eventful year came to an end. So did 2012 and 2011 and 2010. After long and complex negotiations, the Council and the European Parliament on the 16th of December rejected the express classification of electronic cigarettes as medicinal products and agreed to regulate them within the framework of the TPD. <coughs> That's the first mistake. They did not reject the express classification as medicinal products. They left it up to individual member states. That's the first mistake. They say this was a critical step towards creating a proper regulatory framework for the growing electronic cigarette sector in Europe. A framework that should ensure the high quality and the safety of these products without disproportionate barriers for placing them on the market. <coughs> the barriers are very disproportionate and basically they know it wipes out everything that works. In other words, and despite some important compromises which the European Parliament had to unfortunately accept, the core legislators have confirmed that a less harmful alternative to conventional tobacco products must be available to European citizens and must meet strict quality and safety criteria. Tevecca also on behalf of the Kachi, actually not because CSAE hadn't seen this before it went out, Germany in the VDEH, Greece, SEAT, Italy, Anafi, Netherlands, Poland and Spain supports the text adopted during the trilogue on the 16th of December, although with a number of reservations. Representing the biggest share of the European electronic cigarettes industry, we are confident that the agreed provisions are a compromise that the industry can comply with. We encourage the Parliament to adopt the text with no amendments during the upcoming votes in the Envy Committee and at the plenary in respectively January and March. We would like to use this opportunity to personally thank you for your efforts in reaching the Trilogue Agreement, our slickers. We are aware that certain, this is, and this is, this is the bit, we are aware that certain stakeholders continue to lobby the Parliament to amend Article 18 or 
try to apply procedural tricks that would undermine the credibility of the agreement. Any amendment at this stage would automatically lead to a second reading and mean an unhelpful step back. We believe this would be an insult to the core legislators who have worked hard to reach this compromise. Creeps. Actually, whoever it was that wrote that paragraph can kiss my fat, hairy ass. That's as much as I'm going to say about it, because frankly, you can see I'm getting red. It's making my blood boil that they would seek to denigrate their customers, because we are the stakeholders that have been lobbying for amendments and to get rid of 18, that they would diss us like that? Ye gods and little fishes. Moving on. In the meantime, we would still like to draw your attention to a number of provisions, some of which were included in the text at the very last stage of the process, and may still negatively impact the European electronic cigarettes industry at the implementation phase. These include, and then, this is the bit that I don't understand. They've said everything's fine, put it through as it is, and then they've gone through and said this is what's wrong with it. And I don't, I mean, honestly, seriously, <coughs> you, have to, you have to just wonder what the hell have they been thinking? What have they been drinking? Have they been sniffing their own armpits or what? <laughs> and it, uh, is it me, Chris? No, it's not you. I mean, I read that through this morning and I, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. And then, as you see, you get to that bit um, where it's saying, you know, everything's wonderful, but if you could just have another little look at this, you think, what? Are these guys for real? It, it's, it's got me wondering, I have to say. It absolutely does have me wondering. I mean, I'm, I'm just busily scrolling down through the, uh, the comments that are on there. Um, and seriously... <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a big thank you to Toto the robot um, who posted at 6:42, and this is this is the bit that he's posted, which I, I do rather like. Um, if you look a bit further, you'll see that Teveka is a proud member of Caresta, and if you look at Caresta and download the full presentation, you see who the board members are. That was where I got that from. So thank you to Toto the robot for that. But when you look at that, I mean, you have to wonder, do you not, whether indeed this has been the tobacco companies winding Teveka up and sending them forward. Now, I do know that CACE, the French uh, vendor organisation, had said that they hadn't seen sight of this document before it went out and that they were not in agreement with it. And I'm waiting to see an official announcement for them. It may have appeared in the period while I've been setting up for tonight's show. Um, I've also seen uh, from Flavor Art UK, John Chamley, Flavor Art UK, he's not a member of Teveka. So Flavor Art UK is not a member of Teveka. However, because there have been so many calls for boycotts of Flavor Art flavorings, Flavor Art products, that could adversely impact John if, uh, if a boycott goes ahead. What, what's your feeling on a boycott, Chris? And, and is Chat saying anything about this? Yeah, they are sort of um, focusing on John a bit, whereas it's Flavor Art Italy that um, is a member of Tveca, not John at Flavor Art UK. Mm. Now, as for the boycott, as most of the members are, are in the US, then it is the US that is going to be boycotting the majority of the products. I think there's only one member in the UK, as far as I can see. Yes. And again, that seems to be a franchise of some sort. Uh, Neo Sigs. Neo, that's right. Neo Sigs, that's them. And I'd be very surprised if any of those members would have agreed with what Tevecker have put out today. Mm. I'd be very surprised. I understand and support everybody's wishes to boycott. But as I say, it isn't really going to affect us in the UK. There are a few in Europe, not a great many though, are there? If I remember rightly. Um, the US, it will affect us, it won't so much. Mm. But I certainly wouldn't um, 
be boycotting John. This has nothing to do with John at Flavor or EK. He's In not a member. Indeed. Um, I'm getting I'm getting some Skype messages through here, which I'll have to have a look at in the break if I can get to them because I can't see them at the moment uh, because Skype's not on the machine that I look at. Um, once we've got this going, it's very, very difficult for me to check anything else out. I, yeah. I'm just reading through chat here. Um, and what I'm, what I'm finding, what I'm discovering is that these national organisations are not full members of Teveka and <laughs> it's okay. The, the guy who skyped me, just don't, 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 don't apologise. I needed to know that and I will get to it. Um, but yeah, I would love to see uh, these people who have been apparently, I hope, misrepresented by this piece of tripe that's been mm -hmm. uh, put out. I would like to see them publicly saying, nah, not us. We want nothing to do with it. Nah, yeah. not talking about us. Um, and I can, I can guarantee that there is no UK-based vendor who would agree with any of this crap. And just to put something right, and I think we've got to, and I want to put this right as far as I can. One or two people did say, aren't TW totally wicked members of Teveka? No, they are not. They were members of Teveka for all of three weeks when they felt it was wise to team up with more people in the industry. The minute they found out, the minute Totally Wicked found out what Tevecca was about, they gave their cards and coppers and walked, well they didn't walk, they ran away. The minute they found out what Tevecca was all about. They wanted not a bar of them and that was exactly the right thing to do. And I would love to think that vendors throughout Europe would do exactly the same thing because it seems to me, and we, we normally try not to get very political on the here's hour. It's meant to be sweetness and light and full and joy and stuff like that. But I, I just had to cover this tonight because it's had my blood boiling all day. What Tevecca doesn't seem to realise is by rolling over and playing dead, they have not just screwed us, they've also screwed themselves because there's not a product that their members sell that will get through. Trust me, that text in the TPD is written in such a way as to limit the market to as close to nothing as they can get. Mm -hmm. That's the way it stands. And I would, I would ask every vapor out there, no matter what your nationality, make your voice heard. Tell your vendors that are Tevecca members exactly what you think. Because I'm damn sure I'm been doing, I've been doing that and I will continue to do that. So as far as I'm concerned, if you as a vendor are a Tevecca member, you ain't getting any of my money ever again until you come out and you publicly state that you will have nothing to do with them. You leave them and you do the right thing. Your, your take, Chris? I completely agree with you. That's spot on what I would say. Get out of Tevecca now. Exactly fact, right. I'm sitting here wondering how many were consulted before that was uh, that letter was sent. Well, it's a question, isn't it? Uh, it is a question, and I'm sure we'll find out um, as things go further and further who's done what about which about where and who's told who, who's doing what. Uh, mm -hmm. But I have the feeling that this has been... Uh, a certain gentleman acting more or less on his tod with one or two other people in tour. Um, it's a stinking idea. It's a shocking idea. Absolutely shocking idea. But enough of that. I do not have any desire to give that execrable organisation any more airtime. What do you think? I quite agree with you. Right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's, um, what shall we, I know what we'll do. We'll take some adverts and then I can... I'll read that later, actually, because we think we've covered it. We'll take some adverts, and when we come back, when we come back, you've got a choice. You can either choose for me to do a brown needle pseudo micro coil on a K phone, or a dual coil setup on um, the Kraken 
both of which, either of which, will be wicked with so little cotton you would not believe it. The choice is up to yours, to, to yours, choice is up to you. I, can you hear my voice? This is ridiculous. Choice is up to you. Just all you need to do is type into chat either K-Fun or Kraken. K-Fun or Kraken. Choice is yours. We'll find out when we get back. Can I just, before you go to those that break, Yes. I must tell you what Yoda's had to say in chat. Go on then. Tebeka stands for tobacco, very creepy arseholes. I like that. <laughs> Um, Yoda, that's a keyboard you owe me. <laughs> k one's winning by a mile at the moment, Dave. So okay, if you want to go into the break, we'll now's go into the time to do it. We shall do exactly that. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Do not go anywhere other than to get a cloth to wipe this cider off my keyboard. <laughs> Sofa6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out. And we are back in the room here on the 20th of January. Jan <sighs> January. January. The 20th of January in 2014. I was thinking, I was getting ready to say three days before the rise of ASIGs is shown on ITV at 7.30 on the night on Thursday night with Chris Choi, which I'm quite looking forward to seeing. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing good things. I'm hearing good things. Shall we do this recoil thing? Go on then. I need to probably as well need to try and explain why I was talking about colours on uh, on on needles. And that there's a brown needle. Is that visible? Yes, brown needle. And if I get a white needle and put it underneath, it's mucky. David, you filthy pig. Honestly, wipe things down. Right. Brown to the left of me, white to the right, the other way around for you. And you can see how much thicker the white is than the brown. And they are absolutely level, they're nearly touching each other. Yeah? So the brown mm -hmm. is, is quite narrow. And the, these fastenery things that they have on them tell you the gauge of the needle. So I'm working with a brown one, and I don't quite know how... Um, how thick that is it's but it's not very it's not going to be more than a couple of mil and what i have in my hand my other hand that is 
is some 0.25 mil camphal and I don't know whether you'll be able to see it but I'm going to try and wind this on so that you can see it goes on very very snug together I don't know is that easy enough to yeah, see I can it? see it or yeah. shall I I'll zoom in a little bit it's going to get wobbly sorry I can see it nice and clear Dave good good well there we go right so as you can see and because this is so small a diameter you want a fair few turns I'm going to put 10 on there's me 10 as you can you should be able to say that reasonably well yeah yeah and then you want to push them down to get them good and tight I'm using my thumbnail you could use a well you could use anything you want really nails are good for this and then you are going to place it onto your k phone now this is going to be difficult if I do it side to side that's going to be easier to see and you can see that the coil itself could well end up sitting on the bed of the um, the device itself which of course would would short it all out so what you need to do is get the first bit of the wire caught this is a k fun light plus by the way and it's a dog i think to do this little bit but it's got to be done correctly or it won't work and screw that down get in you pig does anybody else swear at their devices while they're recoiling them all the time I've remembered now what I needed to do. I which get was Tourette's every time I, I do with any device, me. Vapor's Tourette's. Mm -hmm. I've taken a full turn round the screw, which makes it easier. Yeah, that's what I have to do to make sure it stays in place. And then, and here's me little clue, then I take another brown needle and put it underneath, which raises the coil and then another turn round the other screw so ah, that good thinking. you see and it just gives you that little bit of space I'm sorry that's not easily seen I do apologize for being all fingers and thumbs so putting that other under there I don't know whether you can see yeah you can you can see that on screen so you've got one on top of the other that gives you that little bit of space that you need yeah that bit of slack yes and then of course you can do all the trimmage of the bits of wire which I shall do now while I remember and before I forget otherwise it'll all go to you which is shorthand for tits up so as you can see or should be able to that's all now very nicely in place and at, at, at this point if you so desire you can stick it on to your device of choice having taken the needle out and you can do the old heaty up and squeezy bit but now comes the point where you're going to wick it let's assume I've done all of that and this is the cotton wick now the thing about the cotton wick is, it doesn't matter what you do, you can licky sticky as much as you like, unless you're really, really clever. And probably a lady that sews a lot, or a gentleman that sews a lot, gentlemen that sew a lot are also available. It's going to be an absolute dog to get that single cord through there. So what I did was to take a pair of pliers, and a piece of canthal and you fold the canthal other bits of wire are available and you fold it to a point right because this is a very thin trying to do this so that everybody can see not succeeding very well because that's very narrow and then you shove it through your coil is that visible? Yes. Having shoved it through your coil, 
you can then thread your cotton. You know what I'm doing here, don't you, Chris? I do, because I've got something to show them once you're done. Oh, have you got a proper tool? I've got a proper little tool. Well, yeah. So you can... Oof, God, I'm all fingers and thumbs. And I can't see, because I'm the wrong distance away from it. It's doable, people, because I've done it. <clears throat> get through. You need that little... Find that little gap. Get it through. How the hell... Do you know what my grandmother used to do this all the time? Knitting and darning and other things like that. That's the way she did it. No, it's not. <sighs> I'm going to try and make this hole a little bit bigger. With a pair of scissors. I know it's cheating, but I don't care. If you've got a better way... Let us know. Video it, in fact. It is weird stuff, this. I bet chat's taking the mickey, are they, Chris? No, they're all talking about embroidery now. What have you started? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Right. I've now got it into me little bit of... Uh, little bit of camphal, so I can now pull it back through. And I don't want it going through double. Reminds me of a poem. Of that young fella from Ghent. Aye. But you need to put your finger over it and pull. And then having done that, you pull the slack end through. Because you've got to get your wire out. Alright? So you're left with just one strand of that tiny weeny stuff that we were talking about. Get in. It might even be easier to create the wicking through the coil before you put it in place it could easily be in fact and i'm just going to edge that back to where it ought to be there now and make sure it's not touching the deck and you would think to yourself well that's not very much wick it's going to be even less because what i'm going to do now is just pull that free end back a bit because i only want it to be able to go down onto that uh, that little tably decky thing there right and when i've got that there that's it that's pretty much as much as i want don't want much more than that might be easier if i cut it to there right so that's it just going down and touching that deck and i want the same on the other side no more than that That's it. That's as much wick as it needs. At this point, you need to put the chimbley on. So let's do that. And then show you what you'll see. And if you look down there, you can see that it just, say, touches the bottom. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now's the point at which you put a little bit of juice on. And you want just enough to soak the cotton and see whether or not it's getting down to the bottom. And you might just want to straighten it off. Now this is going to be very difficult to do because I can't really see. That's it, yeah. Because what happens is the juice pools in the bottom of there. Is that I'm not doing very well here. All right, you can see that the, the wick is now nicely saturated. So I'll stick another drop on, just to be on the safe side. And then we'll clag it on a device. In this case, it's gonna be my trusty copper which the maker thereof keeps on saying, can you send it back, Dave? The answer is very simple. No, I'm using it. It's not because he wants it back. He wants to make it better, but I like it as it is, so I'm not sending it back. It's not happening. Not at the minute, anyway. Right. So there we are in. Let's press the button and see what we get. Woo. That's exactly 1.8 ohms. And you can see... It's blitzing it out. 
That is rather That's pleasant. Excellent. So, let's build the whole thing back up. So we'll put the put it back in the base so that everybody can see. And I'll zoom out a little bit now because I don't need to be zoomed in quite as far. Because I really am. Alrighty. So next on is the chimney or the flue, call it what you like. Screw that on. And then the rest of it, the tank it's itself. And then the top. But I want to take the drip tip out so that I can see what's going on. Screw it all together. And then we go to camera two. And I can finish off. I shouldn't have said it that way because if Andy Sutton's watching, he'll take exactly the wrong meaning out of it. Well, by the way, go to Channel 4 On Demand. Uh, Andy Sutton has a new programme called The Secrets of Dogging. <laughs> that was, somebody pointed that out on Twitter. Right, I shall fill this now. Do I need to show how to fill this? I'll do, I'll do, I'll do yes, it. Yes, please. Right, I better zoom out a little bit further. Somebody in chat, I can't remember who it was, said right. they just got one today. Okay, okay. Now you'll see at the bottom there, zooming, there is a screw. You undo the screw, unscrew the screw, place it to one side. And if you've only just got it, check it's got that O-ring on there that you can see. That is absolutely vital. And then, I would use a brown needle. Get your juice. Um, and I, I think it's easier filled with a needle. Your mileage may vary, but I just have found it easier. And I'm going to use this uh, 36 milligram trip hammer juice because I like it. I might have to top that up with something else, but then you literally use your brown needle and of course because you can get it all the way in, there's air can get out and so that's going to need more than that. I thought I had enough, I was wrong. So I'll stick some uh, 54 in as well, why not, I don't care. I ain't fussy. Takes quite a bit, does the K-phone. Light. So again, back in through the hole. Stick your uh, needle in the hole. Try to do this so that everybody can see everything is not easy. And then it's very much a case of screwing the screw back in. Now here's the hint. It wants to be tight. It's not just, normally I say once it's tight, it's tight, and you don't need to tighten it any further. Get some muscle on it and get it tight. And I'm here to tell you, I have not had a leak at all. Sorry, what do I need to stop? Oh, it's my dogs. Really? And that bloody cat. It was the mention of Andy Sutton dog and they got all excited. Aye. That's what it was. So that's it. And that, that, I've not had a leak out of this K-Phone Light Plus at all. So now's the time, I suppose, to clag it onto a device and try it, innit? Mm -hmm. Burning that, I mean, you saw how very little that took. Mm. Tiny little wee bit of cotton on there. Um, and just to, to prove the point, oh, I'll close you up, you can. Ten turns. And you can see it's saying there, 1.8 ohms, and this is running at 11 watts. And that's 2.5 canthal. That's 0.25 canthal, yes. Right. Oh, that tastes gorgeous. Mm, working a tree. Mm-hmm. That's working. Mm -hmm. 
I suppose I ought to do the, uh, just keep the, keep the thumb down and see how long I can go. It won't burn. That is delicious. And it's mm. so quick and so easy to do. If, if mm -hmm. I was a bit more um, dexterous, it would be even quicker. But you said you had a tool, Chris. Yes, I do. I'm going to hold it up in front of the camera now and see if anybody can see that. Can, can you see that clear enough? Uh, yeah, I think so. Now, those are collapsible eye needles. So they are basically what you've just created with a long twist to them. So they work quite well that the whole thing collapses when you pull something through quite a fine coil. Where do you get them? Um, would you believe Hobbycraft, the same place you got the wool? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Same place I got the wool? Absolutely. Wouldn't you just credit it? Well, the next time I'm going, well, the cotton wool. Next time I go down to Hobbycraft, I'm looking for some of them then. Um, so is that the same sort of uh, diameter as a, a brown needle? No, it's much finer. Is it? Yeah. Ooh, so you could do uh, even thinner ones? Yeah, that is in they are incredibly fine. And me being me, and I know um, Lenny Marie Papa Torson would have the same things, as will some of the other ladies in chat. I bought some of these Got a nice selection there. And the tool that no lady should be without, and all. I'm pleased you said that. <laughs> um, you, Steffi, uh, Dampf Keks, as she goes in there, as opposed to Dampf Kremel Keks, um, who's one of my favourite people on the planet, has just said her mum works at Rico headquarters, Rico being the people that produce this. Yes, you do, as she told me this. Yes, Steffi, that was a silly thing to say. <laughs> She'll be getting asked for free samples left, right and centre. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the same place as the cutting wool, Jester. Same place as the cutting the, wool. The other way of doing that, if, if people are finding it difficult, is if you actually pull the strands of the wool apart. Yes. Take half the strands put them through a little darning needle or something like that, or even the twisted wire, but it needs to be a firm bit of wire, and pull it through, and then cut the, the loop at one end. Mm -hmm. And then you've still got exactly the same thickness as what you would have had before, and it's going to go through very easily. See, th this, is, this is why I like having you on here, Chris, because you know about these things. I'm a bloke. <laughs> it's just what we do with embroidery and sewing and stuff like that. So for once, this is something that the girls are going to be able to do, you know? Indeed. Now, Big Craig has said, where do you get the cotton lace wick from? I got mine from Hobbycraft. It's called Rico Summer. That's right. Fashion Summer in white. Re Big Beast put the link in there. There you go. And you can buy it online. You don't have to go to Hobbycraft, you can buy it online. In fact, I would, I would strongly suggest, I would strongly suggest you don't go to Hobbycraft because there's all kinds of stuff there that you want to buy. It doesn't help going online. It, I bought mine online and I bought a bloody big box arrived and you saw the kits, didn't you? Yes. Where do you think they came from? Oh, half Lord. price. I see. I say, I understand. <laughs> the, the thing, I tell you what, I mean, in, you know, little, if you, if you need tiny weeny um, pliers and, and tweezers with all different shapes on, they've got all kinds of stuff there if, you, if you're into fiddling and faddling with kit. Have you oh, seen jewelry. the time, Chris? Oh my God, jewellery tools are perfect. Are we going to go into the next commercial break? I think we'd better do, otherwise okay. we'll forget. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I will tip. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I have to be so careful, you know, because I'm not supposed to tice people into spending money. Well, certainly not on embroidery products. 
But you can use them for making wicks and stuff like that. I know, I know. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> See you shortly. <laughs> And I, you know something? I must be going crackers in my old age. I was busily reading chat. I should never do that. No, wrong with reading chat. Yes. <laughs> uh, Rico Essentials double knitting yarn white, Marshall Moore is asking. That's the thin stuff, yes. The double knitting cotton yarn white. That's the, that's the one. And it's, uh, it's love. I got two balls. Just one more than Hitler. <laughs> Oh, you couldn't resist that one. <laughs> no, I couldn't. You? I had to slip it in. Uh, well, we were going to talk about wicks, weren't we? But you, you got a message before or during the adverts. I did. Sav sent me um, a posting that somebody put in chat, somebody called Resistance. Um, and I'll read it out. It says, I've read a posting from a French Facebook user. It said, the French, French Association case who is a said supporter of this letter, has just denied that fact. What about the others? Furthermore, she said, no, they say they represent the ESIG industry, which doesn't seem to be true either. Better check with the other ESIG merchant associations and group to know if they've really signed this. If it's not the case, they should put a formal complaint for an illegal use of their name. Now that's very, very interesting indeed. It is a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Just a bit. Yes. Absolutely right. Um, so <laughs> you heard it You heard it here first. Read it here first, then heard it. That's what happened. All good. That's right, because we've got the best chat in the world, haven't we? I've, well, I've said it a thousand times before, and I'm going to keep on saying it. And the reason I'm going to keep on saying it is because it's true. Yeah. Time after time after time, they have proved it, and they have nothing to prove. I think it's fabulous. I mean, when you think about the BBC vape meets, where did it come from? Chat. Our chat. Are you? Have you got a smile on your face there? Mm -hmm. Why? What have you seen that I haven't? <laughs> Lamentals put in is DD making a cardigan on next week's show. <laughs> No, I'm going to... I'm going to... Hat and I'm, gloves, Lamental. Hat and gloves. Uh, uh, excuse me. I'm going to knit a tin of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Using various different kinds of wick. That really doesn't work. That was the worst. If you'd said a candle... Yes. That was a lousy link, but never mind. It wasn't brilliant, but all the nice girls love a candle. <laughs> all the nice girls like the wick. Because there's something about... A, no, no, we'll not go there. Wick. Right, wick. 
beginner's stuff really this but in case you don't know the whole thing of wick started if you like going back to the very very early days when everything was a silica wick at least we think it was don't we but all of the the uh the atomizers that we had had this little metal mesh cage around it mm -hmm. and they were quite frankly not that good as time went by people experimented with all kinds of things to try and find something that was a bit more tasteful i suppose you would say and they came up with this stuff which is steel mesh stainless steel mesh and it looks i mean it's lovely to play with but it is just exactly that it's a cloth if you like woven out of very very fine strands of steel and what you do with this is you, you basically i'm sure you're on the edge of it you just roll it up and make a tube out of it or a solid out of it and that you use in something like a genesis atomizer uh, as as your wicking material um, and it's capillary action is all it is that that's that's all it's about it's just capillary action to try and allow the juice to get from wherever it is to the coil itself that proved popular for quite a while and then came along this stuff and it's effectively it's the inside of a Bowden cable it's steel cable at, at various different widths this is uh, two and a half mil this one and it's about the thickest you need to use because it's pretty damn solid as you can see at the end there but this with a wrapping of the steel mesh that we were talking about uh, around the top end where the coil's going to go because this conducts electricity like nobody's business it's brilliant stuff um, with a wrap of the mesh around the, the end where the coil's going to go you end up with something that really wicks rather well but then we get on to cotton and I've been over the last couple of weeks using these two balls of cotton the thick one which is like a bit like a boot lace but is actually uh, it's a tube it's tubular like the tubular bandages you get to put on your fingers when you've done a boo-boo on your finger you know mom I've hurt me finger and they use that it's like uh, like a cotton tube and this which is more as you just saw by that re-wicking it's more like a yarn and, and Kat tells me it's double knitting I have no idea what that means but that's pure cotton and cotton wicks like there is no tomorrow if you use a little bit too much you get juice by the gallon possibly where you don't want it and while I was sitting in the bath before the show because I, I like to do that just to relax I came up with an idea and I'm gonna I'm, I'm what I had visions of you in your bath with a lace wick over the side that that actually all right I've got to warn up you know it wasn't far from the truth, it's not yeah. far from the truth because what 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 you know how you put your towel on the side of the bath uh, no. All right. But some do. You know, yeah. How a bloke puts the towel wherever he stood just before he gets in the bath. Yeah. Yeah. It was over the side of the bath and it was dibbling in the water, wasn't it? And wicking, yeah. And wicking up. Mhm. Mm and then I thought, there's an experiment. This is what I'm going to try, and I didn't have time to set it up tonight, but I'm going to try and find the bits I need to do this. If not next week, the week after. Well, no, it won't be next week. What well, might be next week um, and I'm going to try and set up wick siphons to see which wicks quicker so we can do it with silicon we can do it with mesh I don't think we'll be able to do it with the rope because I'm not sure I'll be able to bend it into the right shapes and we'll do it with the cotton and I'm going to try and set this experiment up and see which one will fill a small container with juice the quickest acting as a siphon and that'll tell you which wicks quicker try seeing that after three pints of guinness mm. that's good because quit my pants has asked that very question does mesh or rope go through juice as fast as cotton so that saves me asking you that question 
Well, it's, it's the easiest way to find out, isn't it? Let's do the experiment and see. Yeah, we'll, good idea. We'll do science. Now, talking about science, I've just been reminded in chat, but Kat also reminded mm -hmm. me before the show, if, you, uh, if you're aware of Dimitri, the vape in Greek, he's been having a few issues with cotton. Um, and he's seen his, his medical advisors, the doctors and the A&E and stuff like that. And it's, it's up on Dimmy's page. Um, and again, like an idiot, I haven't got a link. Um, Sorry, Sab's got it and she'll put it in chat later. There you go. See, this, this team is fabulous. It's dead Post good. Here. She'll put a link, Sab will put a link in off to, off to Dimitri's page. Uh, he's been having some issues with cotton. And he's on it and he's trying to find out why. But he's trying to find out why the right way by talking to the doctors and the scientists and people like that. And we are also going to have words with people in the know to see if we can discover the issues. Now, as far as I'm aware, it's not widespread, but like with all of these things, if there's anything that you try and you use that you have an issue with, the best advice I can give you is to stop using that and go back to the back a step to one that doesn't give you any issues. That's got to be the way. Now, Deep In Spec says, takes, take wicks longer than 40 centimetres, capillary action lifts up liquid to this height. He's right. I'm not so much bothered about the height it'll lift it to, it's how quick it'll actually siphon. Because, and this is where Chris comes in, because you had a situation with your script, did you not? Oh. God, did I not? Where yes. using cutting will, of of cutting will balls and or however it was overwicked, yeah. And it it was flooding out of the hole in the middle of the scrape, was it not? That's right, it was. Um, Absolutely, it was a nightmare. But that was siphoning. It was yes. si siphoning it out of the tank. And, and I couldn't fathom why, because there was nothing going into the centre tank. And all I could think of is it was over wicking. I had too much cotton wool in the wrong place. Well, the thing about it is, of course, with, with a, a setup like that, it's, it's eminently possible that because the juice we use is quite viscous, and you use a, a fairly th thick juice, don't you? Mm, it, it's um, heavier on the PG side than it is on the VG, so it's fairly thin, the juice I'm currently using. The thing, thing with it is, is if you get a, a little drop, once that drop hits something else that will allow it to, to, to move, like the side of a, um, the, the hole in the scrape, if that drop isn't broken, it continues to siphon because of mm -hmm. um, surface tension. This is, we do, we do science, you know. We do do science. We so certainly do. Surface tension can hold a siphon in place and it's surface tension that actually causes capillarity and wicking and all of those other things. So there, we've done science, we've done ranty stuff, we've <laughs> put the world to rights, we've discovered needles with holes in them, but big holes in them that you can pull wick through with. We've looked at different kinds of wicks and I've still not used the videos that I've had sitting in Wirecast <laughs> for the last three weeks. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> I've, I've got this here. The one thing that we can definitely say about the Here's Hour is you get plenty of variety, don't you? Oh, you're right there, mate. It's, and, and yet again, um, I've got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling slightly emotional, not tired and emotional, just emotional, because I had a cracking weekend talking to people I consider to be very good friends uh, about e-cigarette types of stuff, and I'll tell you about that some other time. It's, now's not the time, but it was brilliant. It's tired us, and I drank a lot. Not my fault, I was led astray. Don't ask who by, my lips are sealed. But the picture's still in my head. Don't ask. No questions, no answers. Not going to tell you. Lips are sealed. Um, but I, I've just looked at how many people have been sitting watching the show tonight live, and, and you thrill me every time you come along. I think it's fabulous. Chris, you got any last messages for anybody before we disappear? Because it is that time. 
No, um, I've answered, I've been asked again what the name of the needles were, so I've answered that in chat. Collapsible eye needles from Bidalon. That's right. Hang on, Sab is just getting in touch with me. Um, I just wanted to be sure that everything's, I've got everything there. Oh, yes. Don't forget, Phil on our Y4 radio. Yes. Now. Now. He's on now. He's on now. Exactly right. Um, and if, if one, just a reminder, tomorrow night, we've got Marco on, nine o'clock. Yes. Then our German... Computer sorted. It's good, yes. He's got his computer fixed, so he's doing his show tomorrow, followed by our German language show, which Steffi will be on, one of my favourite people in the whole wide world, whose mum works for the people that does the cotton wick. There you go. I'll just uh, drop in it. <laughs> well and truly. Uh, Wednesday night, the team talks back on. With all kinds of stuff to talk about, that's going to be fun. Thursday. Thursday is a big day. Sure is. Half past seven on ITV, and then the man himself, Chris Choi, will be with us at nine o'clock. I might, if I get permission, play the half-hour show out before nine o'clock, so that those of you that don't get to see it can. Then Chris Choi will be on the show to answer any questions you may have and take any criticisms you may have. I think... That's either very brave or the programme is going to be very good. Or it might be both. But either way, that'll be in VT Talk on Thursday night. And then it rolls round with RY4 Radio at 10 o'clock every night after our shows. And then on Sunday, of course, Dave's Tackle Box will be back with you. And that will see yet another week gone. And I'd better go, otherwise Sav... I'll be giving Chris some verbals about the time. She will. She will. <laughs> oh, and can I just say to chat, have all your needlework all ready for next week, please. I will be investigating. Are you giving them homework now? Of course. <laughs> <sighs> hey, it's been cracking. It's been a, a, real, a rare privilege and delight to share the last hour with you. So from Chris and myself, until we see you next time, vape on. Vip hard and don't let the bastards grind you down. We'll see you soon. Take care of each other. Bye bye. Night all.